Hey guys, what's up? All right, all right, all right. It's Double Deuce back. Today we're looking at the new supercharger that uh, is offered from for the Toyin engine, the Toyin V8. Um, as you can see, mine is going through some rolling changes here. Um, I decided to rebuild my engine uh, for the fact I ran about five gallons of nitro through this. Uh, I've blown it up twice purposely to see what the limitations were. Um, so now I'm waiting for some parts to come. But in the meantime, the new supercharger came. So what we're going to do is we're going to look inside the supercharger today. Um, I'm going to show you guys what you need, what comes in the kit. And I'm going to show you the official directions because... Uh, I, I was accused of um, paid promotion so like I say when I when I bought this and I blew it up twice it's out of my pocket I paid for this um, so you know it is what it is you guys can think what you want but uh, you know we'll go from there okay and so we're gonna tear the supercharger apart we're gonna look at the impellers inside we're gonna see what makes this thing work because when you just turn this thing, this has a nice, nice whine to it. This thing sounds just like the Hellcat um, Challenger Red Eyes. It, it's just insane. And I was, I was so excited to get this in the mail today. But I will down or upload down below uh, a link to the official installation directions for the supercharger. Um, not my version. Uh, I know some of you guys like my version. Other guys don't. But, um, and I'll go through a couple of snafus I ran into on this one here, too. Um, and, you know, you get a little bag of parts with it. Here. So you got a new water pump housing and all this stuff because there's a lot of differences on this. So, let's get started. Grab your favorite brebbies, popcorn, smoke, whatever you want. And hang out with me today. All right, so I'm going to show you what comes in the kit. Okay, you're going to have to reuse your carbs because um, they don't come in the kit. However, um, you get a new intake manifold. The intake manifold is machined both sides for the supercharger to bolt on. It still has those really tiny, tiny ports in them. I'm going to leave those um, because I kind of went my own direction and I ported my intake manifold to a 4 millimeter and uh, made these bigger because it was naturally aspirated. So, you know, now we have, now we have force coming into this, okay? So it comes with your intake, your supercharger, and when you turn this thing, put it up to your face because you can feel the air blowing just by just giving it a quick turn. It, I mean, it is it is nice, very very nice product that they did there. Um, it comes with the scoop, and it has the butterflies that open. Um, however, my kit did not come with a rod to connect these. I may have to come up with that. In the kit itself, okay, you have a new water pump housing. Um, I guess the outer part of the housing, not the bracket. Um, it comes with a belt. Uh, I was concerned about the belt. You know, it comes with a idler pulley. And it comes with this tiny little rubber... I guess it's a sleeve that goes over top your existing water pump. So the way I see it, um, don't hold me to it yet because I have not looked at the directions yet. But it looks like the water pump has to run backwards, so you're going to have to switch your lines around. So, But everything's in the kit. Um, you know, the idler pulley bracket, you know, your, um, your connector to open up your butterflies here, you know. Um, the thing is, on my Camaro build, I set the carbs up backwards 
other than the way they did it in the kit. So they open by pulling them backwards. Now you can set your carbs up the same way, okay? You can set them up so the throttle opens backwards. However, the way the scoop is made underneath, the throttle arms have to be on the right side of the engine, not the left. So that means that they're coming forward. So I'm gonna work on this. I'm gonna probably alter this here. Um, and it'll be a last minute thing. But the only other thing I've seen in this kit here, there's some double-sided sticky tape there that mounts this to your carbs. And, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, we'll see. We'll see when it comes there. I may have to come up with something different for that myself. Um, you're going to have to switch your arm upside down, you know, because it'll hit the, it'll hit the scoop housing. There's no access here for, you know, they have your throttle arm openings here to swing and there's nothing in the middle. So you got to turn your arm upside down, which is not a big deal. Uh, what I plan on doing is I plan on opening up the other side here, just like that over here, so I can still run this in my Camaro without having to redo all the radio line, or, you know, the throttle rods and everything else in it and come up with swivels and everything else. You can mount the carbs either way because the supercharger has the tiny little bosses on here. Um, and they are threaded in the carb so you can the bosses are there there's open holes you can put them in either either direction so if you want them have them run forward or backward however you set up your your build you'll go from there so so I looked online and I was trying to find directions to put this together because it came with none and um, um, if you get on Sterling Kit Facebook page, um, the guys there were cool enough to uh, like dig them up and they, they posted them on there and I will try to get a link for them. I want to thank those guys for that. Um, so when I first heard the sound of this supercharger, I mean, I had a little chub, you know what I mean? It was, it was like, yes, because that's, I mean, that's the sound that, you know, that is never heard ever in RC cars, RC engines, or nothing. Um, the wine that comes out of the supercharger is just awesome, you know. So I decided, um, being I blew up my engine twice on my own to see what the limitations were here, I decided to tear it apart and put, you know, new rods in it and all that stuff. Um, but I do want to touch on a few things here that I was very impressed with, okay? This cylinder block, it's virtually indestructible. I mean, there's, there's, I mean, it's just crazy, crazy built, you know? Um, this thing blew rods out of it twice from me over revving the thing. And uh, when, you know, you get all kinds of debris flying around inside, this is what happens. You look in there, you see, I cleaned it up a little bit with a, you know, a little Dremel tool and, you know, because this was, looked like World War III inside. Then I opened up the sides a little bit here um, because of the, you know, the shrapnel flying around there, like just hammering this thing apart. And um, and then why I did all that stuff, I decided, you know what, uh, I, I'm looking at the wear inside the engine. Um, you'll see the front bushing has a nice, you know, nice wear pattern on it here. And then you look down in the corner there, and oh, the little little area that was recessed and if you look in the center mains it's virtually untouched and except for the back side where it was seating itself to run now you'll see back here there's a mark because that's where all the um, rod bolt heads were flying around inside the engine when it was blowing up and uh, and it actually put a rod through the uh, the oil pan in the corner over here you see that notch there and a the rod blew right through the pan so it is what it is you know but 
my final thoughts on this thing is like the crankshaft was virtually untouched. Like this, you know, I thought first off, what's going to happen is the crankshaft's going to break. But you know what? This thing has blown up twice, and this crankshaft is still in perfect condition. Um, you know, hats off to Toy and Engine on that one. They really, they really like stepped it up there and made like a nice crankshaft here that was, you know, not brittle, not, not you know, flimsy or anything like that. It was like all the, the supports in the thing work well. So, anyways, like I say, I uh, the the cylinder heads are virtually still perfect on this thing. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tear them all apart. I'm going to bead blast them to give them that aluminum look there. And uh, and with an orange block, and I'll probably bead blast the intake manifold so it looks aluminum. And the supercharger too. I mean, you know, it's cool they did them in black and all that stuff, but it is what it is. So let's, uh, let's tear this thing apart. And... Look inside the impeller shafts of this. Now, inside here, there's a couple of gears in the front case. Um, Trying to do this really fast. Um, now, my suggestion would be when you get your supercharger, take these bolts out front and back, you know, one at a time, just put a little Loctite on them. Because the vibration of these engines is astronomical. It is like, you know, it's crazy. Especially uh, when you bring it beyond their recommended RPM. Um, the new X-Power Toyin V8 is, they say you can rev it to 12,500 RPMs. Yeah, it's cool, but I mean, I don't know of a V8 that will go over... 10,000 rpm safely, you know, I've never I've, I've, all my life. I've never had one so You know like I mean nine ten grand is about You know my kids 327 that was in this Camaro uh, We used to bounce the the rev limiter off 10,000 rpms but That was a very short stroke well proven 327 engine So now we got the front bolts out now, there's two plates here. There's an outer one and there's an inner one. So grab the inner one, slide it out like this, and you'll see in the case, it's hollow with two recesses in the back for bearings. This is your impeller shaft. Now, one thing that I seen on this, there's a gasket in between here to help seal the, the pressure. You got your two bearings at the back but it looks like it's a three-piece impeller shaft that's screwed together. One, two, three. You see, one, two, three. Now, I'm trying to look inside there, but when you turn this thing, they mate, like, perfectly. So, you know, I was, I was concerned because it was a three-piece shaft that they would be, there would be in differences there. But this thing, like, it just mates together and it's very nice. It's very smooth. So, so this is the look of the inside. Now, I'll explain how this works. I'll put this back on here temporarily. And don't don't get these out of time. There's a there's gears in here with pins and stuff that time these things to make them perfectly mate together. Okay, so you know don't don't rip it apart unless you have to. And you know, like I say, it's a it's a crapshoot when you do that because you have to time these things so they mate perfectly. Now, how a supercharger works is when this thing turns, all right, you're you're gonna think in your head, wait a minute, the impellers are blowing upward, but they're not. When the impellers are turning, this one turns this way, that one turns that way. The pressure comes up the top and then it rolls down the side of the cases here on both sides with those impellers which causes a sucking action on your carburetor side and it builds the pressure here and it puts it right into the intake manifold and 
like I say, this thing has a nice, nice wine to it. So you'll be very impressed when you install this in your, on your Toy and V8. Um, I was seriously thinking that the cost of these are, they're, they're pretty, they're, they're priced right. And this, this supercharger could be used for other engines too. And I thought about it. Um, and you might see down the road another version of the supercharger on one of my other builds. Um, the quality of this is extremely nice, extremely nice. It is very well built, it's very well thought out. Uh, so, you know, kind of keep that in mind when you're, you know, when you if you want to buy one or something, you want to put it on. You could put these on any engine. Any engine, all right. It doesn't have to be the Toyin V8. You can mount this on any engine as long as you can make bracketry and a belt, you know. So if you want your, you know, FO175 to be supercharged, you can do that too. Um, you know, you just got to come up with an intake manifold that works well. So, I mean, I'm seeing this as a very cool potential um, addition to our hobby. And like I say, Seriously, like five years ago, guys, when I started um, working with Sterling Kit and, you know, and the little FS100, you know, I never thought that today we would still have a, like a V8, especially a supercharged version of a V8, you know. So, you know, any questions, comments, feel free to hit me up. Um, you know, like I say, I'll put a link below for the official installation guide here. Um, and I want to thank sterlingkit.com. And I'd like to thank all you fans out there who support me. And I would like to thank the guys on the Facebook group, you know, for Sterling Kit and Toy and Engine for, you know, their updates and all that stuff. But like I say, guys, like, share, subscribe if you want. Love to all. And I will catch you later, man. Adios.